Take a stroll back to the late 1950s and uncover a true television classic, a series that goes beyond nostalgia. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis invites you into the comedic escapades of a charming young man navigating the challenges of love, high school, and life itself. But hang on tight, because this timeless sitcom has more to offer than you might think. What makes this show eternally relevant? What qualities turn it into a timeless symbol of the industry? As you tune in, you'll discover a mix of humor, surprises, and heartfelt moments that withstand the test of time. It's an emotional roller coaster that evokes laughter, gasps, and perhaps a tear or two. And about those unforgettable moments, is there a specific scene or incident that has left a lasting impression on you? The magic of the many loves of Dobie Gillis lies not just in its story, but in the connections it builds with its audience. Share your thoughts in the comments below. We're eager to hear about your personal experiences and cherished memories associated with the show. So buckle up, because there are plenty of funny, surprising, and even poignant facts waiting to unfold in this classic series. Keep watching, and don't forget to share your own stories with us. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV gem? Ready for a trip down memory lane? It awaits your company. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, which aired from 1959 to 1963, is considered a significant sitcom from the late 50s to the early 60s. People have different opinions about the show, but it's worth noting its influence in showing the generation gap of that time. In the series, Dobie Gillis, played by Dwayne Hickman, deals with the challenges of growing up during the Father Knows Best era. The story revolves around Dobie's attempts to find love, mainly focusing on his efforts to impress Thalia Menninger, a girl who likes expensive things. The conflicts arise because Dobie often has money problems and doesn't like to work, which his hardworking father, Herbert T. Gillis, doesn't appreciate. The portrayal of Dobie's parents, Herbert and Winnie Gillis, is interesting for its realistic depiction. Herbert, even though he's loud, represents the generation gap in a funny way, while Winnie is more lenient with Dobie's work habits. The writing and editing of the show are praised for being clever and smoothly transitioning between scenes. The characters, aside from Dobie and his friends, include quirky personalities like Chatsworth Osborne Jr., Maynard G. Krebs, Zelda Gilroy, Mrs. Osborne, and Mr. Pomfret. The series is especially good in its early seasons, offering a mix of humor and comments on societal norms. Season 3, which takes place in college, shows Dobie growing up while still having funny conflicts with Maynard and Mr. Gillis. The introduction of new romantic interests brings a fresh perspective to the story. By the fourth season, the focus shifts to Dobie's cousin Duncan Gillis and Maynard's funny antics, changing the dynamics. Although some episodes become a bit exaggerated, the show keeps a special charm, standing out in the TV world of that time. While certain parts may seem old-fashioned now, the main idea of the many loves of Dobie Gillis still holds up well. There are challenges in releasing a complete DVD set due to copyright issues, but the series remains a unique and special part of TV history. In Maynard G. Krebs' world, the mysterious G isn't just a letter. It's a playful nod to his Aunt Walter as Maynard jokes about his mother's spelling skills. This funny detail adds another layer to Maynard's character, showing the show's talent for bringing humor to everyday situations. The influence of the many loves of Dobie Gillis goes beyond TV, leaving a lasting impression on the famous Hanna-Barbera cartoon Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Fred Jones is like Dobie Gillis, Velma Dinkley is inspired by Zelda Gilroy, Daphne Blake by Thalia Menninger, and the beloved Shaggy Rogers has his roots in Maynard G. Krebs. This connection between two different shows highlights the impact of the show on TV. A unique feature of Dobie Gillis is how it connects with the audience. In almost every episode, Dobie talks directly to viewers, breaking the fourth wall. Standing in front of a copy of Rodden's The Thinker, these talks cleverly frame the story of the week, providing insights. The connection to the famous statue adds an artistic touch to how the show tells its story. As Dobie deals with love, high school, and life, the series smoothly mixes humor and comments on society. The characters like the lovable Dobie, his diverse friends, and the funny supporting cast add to the show's appeal. Smart writing and smooth scene changes make watching the show enjoyable. While the early seasons focus on Dobie searching for love amid money troubles, going to college in season three adds new layers to his character. Introducing new romantic interest adds depth to the story, showing Dobie's growth. 
Even in later seasons, the show keeps its special charm, shifting the focus to Dobie's cousin, Duncan Gillis, and Maynard's funny antics. Despite potential challenges in releasing a full DVD set because of copyright issues, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis remains a unique and timeless part of TV history. While some parts might seem old-fashioned, the main themes of the show still connect with audiences, making it a classic. In the late 1950s, the TV show The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis brought humor through the adventures of Dobie Gillis. The show had plans for a spin-off centered on Sheila James as Zelda, but it got rejected because the CBS head thought Zelda was too butch. Sheila James later pursued a career in law and politics and became the first openly gay person elected to the California State Assembly and a California State Senator. Dwayne Hickman, who played Dobie, had real-life issues with Tuesday Weld, his on-screen love interest, leading to Weld leaving after the first season. Interestingly, Dwayne's actual older brother, Daryl Hickman, stepped in as Davy Gillis, Dobie's elder sibling, for three season one episodes. The series, running from 1959 to 1963, depicted the challenges of growing up in the late 50s and early 60s. Dobie's pursuit of love, especially with Thalia Menninger, unfolded amid financial struggles and a dislike for work, leading to humorous clashes with his hardworking father, Herbert T. Gillis. As the show progressed, Dobie's character evolved. The introduction of college life in season three brought new dimensions, with Dobie navigating love amidst academic pursuits. Season four shifted focus to Dobie's cousin, Duncan Gillis, and Maynard's amusing antics, altering the show's dynamics. While some episodes may exaggerate, the series kept its charm, securing a unique place in television history. Beyond the screen, the show's influence extended. Maynard G. Krebs' quirky world added humor with a playful nod to his Aunt Walter and a clever link to Scooby-Doo characters. Dobie speaking directly to viewers, breaking the fourth wall, added an artistic touch, framing each episode with insights. Despite potential challenges in releasing a complete DVD set due to copyright issues, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis remains a timeless and distinctive part of TV history. Its themes, though rooted in a bygone era, continue to connect with audiences, making it a classic. Max Schulman and his writing team faced a challenge when introducing the beatnik character Maynard G. Krebs in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. Lacking knowledge about beatniks, Bob Denver, who portrayed Maynard, took the initiative to immerse himself in the culture. He visited Los Angeles coffee shops and hipster hangouts to authentically shape Maynard's persona. During the first season, Dobie's father, Herbert T. Gillis, had a recurring catchphrase expressing frustration with his son, I gotta kill that boy, I just gotta. However, sponsors disapproved of this running gag, leading to its discontinuation. The producers were also required to soften Herbert T. Gillis' character, toning down his sharp edges. Bob Denver's unexpected draft during the fourth produced episode resulted in Maynard being written out of the series. Michael J. Pollard temporarily replaced him as Maynard's cousin, Jerome Krebs. Denver, however, failed the Army physical, prompting his rehiring and Maynard's return to the series. Pollard, having signed a play or pay contract, was compensated for all episodes he had been initially signed for despite his dismissal. In the world of the many loves of Dobie Gillis, Herbert T. Gillis' catchphrase may have faced opposition, but it mirrors the challenges the production team encountered. Bob Denver's real-life draft situation added an unexpected twist to Maynard's character arc. The series' ability to navigate these challenges and maintain its unique charm reflects its resilience in the realm of classic TV.